Hey guys, and welcome to a very final quick look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey before its launch, which is less than a month away. Are you excited? Let me know in the comment section. This one is going to be a little bit less specific and, and tight and demonstrating different features of the game, just because I feel that most of it I've already told you and there's only so much I can do without spoiling some big stuff. Um, this is going to be more just generally looking at like the setup of the plot, um, where you begin in the game, etc, etc. So for those of you who aren't really sure about early game, or you wanted a little bit more of the plot to see if you were going to buy it or not, um, then hopefully this video is for you. I am going to make sure though, however, there aren't massive spoilers. So I'm going to hopefully try and tread a nice balanced line for you of this is roughly who people are. This is kind of where she lives or he lives, um, but not right in your face. This is why this has happened and stuff. So fingers crossed um, I've done OK. Thank you very much to Ubisoft for inviting me out. It's always a pleasure. Um, I always like to go and play an Assassin's Creed game early um, just because it means more time playing Assassin's Creed. And I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the setup. It's it's nice to have. It's nice to have the origin. Um, it's, ni it's nice to see the start of the game because obviously we saw late game, we see mid game, um, and I'm beginning to slowly piece things together. Not necessarily the whole plot, but I can see the character development now and that's really, really good. Um, because at the start of the game, we go to Kefalonia, um, which is not Cassandra's birthplace, but it is the place that she has been brought up. Um, due to some very awkward circumstances, in her youth. Uh, she was separated from her parents, washes up on Kefalonia, and is found by a guy called Marcos, um, who it basically becomes kind of a father figure, but he's kind of more of a Fagan style role. So got to pick a pocket or two boys kind of thing. Um, he, he has bad judgment with businesses. He gambles. He borrows money and can't repay it, etc. So by the time we get to her in the game, she's pretty much done with the whole thing. Um, she's, she's done with however many years it has been of him using her as uh, like a protector, enforcer, bailiff, bodyguard thing. Um, instead of letting her live her life and enjoy whatever she's doing. So she's kind of bound to Marcos still because of you know, taking her in as a kid, etc, etc. But I think it's she's at the point now where she's beginning to go, this is absurd. Like, I can't keep doing this. This is, this is annoying me and I just want something else. Um, she wants adventure, she wants variety, and that's something she's not going to get on Kefalonia. So um, when this random guy turns up off the back of a mission and says like, oh, I like what you did there. How about you do this job for me and I'll help you out, effectively. Um, she kind of jumps at the chance and that's what starts her journey off of the island and off into the Assassin's Creed game itself. One final character to mention is Phoebe who is her, I don't want to say her younger sister because they're not related, but it's that kind of a role. She very clearly looks up to Cassandra. She wants her very own eagle. Um, we may find out how that works as well because there's mention that Cassandra has been blessed by Zeus. Um, usually blessings by Zeus come in the form of a thunderstorm. So I don't know if that's a good thing, um, but she appears to have had an eagle as a result of it, or that's at least what people think has happened. So um, I don't know if there's a ritual. I don't know if we'll find anything else out about that. But she basically wants to be Cassandra and follow in her footsteps. So um, that's, I think, probably one of the only things keeping her on the island, really. Apart from not being able to get hold of a ship or money to leave. Is also that she needs to kind of protect Phoebe. Because uh, Phoebe gets kidnapped every other week as well so there is actually a mission where you have to go and save phoebe and you're thinking oh god oh no like what's gonna happen they're gonna be all right um is she gonna be okay like hopefully they don't hurt her and then when you get there she's like what took you so long like i was gonna just leave i was gonna escape and leave like two minutes ago so she's basically a mini cassandra she's sorted she'll be fine and that's pretty much it on the character front there are one or two I've purposely not mentioned um, and you will see in the full playthrough why but that should give you a brief rundown of the premise of the game like the start of the game without spoiling massive massive bits for you um, so hopefully that sort of helped if you if you had any queries about that there's two other things I want to briefly mention 
um, whilst I'm looking at Assassin's Creed, because I don't think I mentioned them before. Uh, number one is the bounty system and the mercenary system. Uh, bounty system works a little bit like GTA or anything like that. You could pay off the bounties. That bit I did explain. What I didn't explain, because I didn't really know, was how in-depth the new mercenary system is. And I should add, you're a mercenary too. Um, the first one that you meet, or at least the first one I met, was called Talos the Stone Fist. So if we go to Talos's page, you could see the loot he will drop. He's got a heart condition, which means he'll take more damage from assassinations. Um, and then also death from above, he'll take more damage from ranged attacks. So um, I like that there's that little tweak. You know, it's, it's, it's not a broken system. I do like the mercenaries turning up. Sometimes they're a bit annoying. Sometimes they turn up when you're in the middle of a fight, um, because why not? Douchebags. But on the whole, I like the system very much. I like that there is this person who is trying to hunt you. It totally fits with the story, um, the brief of, of being, you know, pursued because you have something valuable potentially, um, or you're just causing trouble or whatever. Um, it worked in Origins personally, so I'm quite happy to have them again. Um, the second thing I want to add, because I didn't really talk about it last time in detail, I kind of glossed over it, was the exploration mode, I think it's called, which is the way Assassin's Creed Odyssey is meant to be played. Quests will not have quest markers originally. They will have a bit more of a vague direction, which you can help narrow down by talking to people, etc, etc, doing certain things. Um, but you have to try and scout it out for yourself. So there's no properly written map. You just have to work it out. I personally found not a lot of problems because we did a lot of the um, the riddles in Origins. And I think I saw a hint of something like a riddle system in this. But don't quote me on that because it was very brief and I wasn't paying attention that much. Um, but I like that the quests aren't just straight up here is thing, go to thing, success. It's a bit more... So-and-so was last seen at the north of this mountain. We know that they like this spot or this spot. Which one could they be at? And then you go and look with and you scout it out with Icarus and stuff like that. So I like that because it's a bit more interactive. It's not just the mindless riding to point A and then to point B thing. Um, so I can't remember if I'd mentioned it before. I don't think I have specifically. Um, but yeah, love it. Happy with that. I'm sure... By the time we get to like level 30 and I can't find a quest mission thing because I'm just being an idiot with the map that I'll be cursing it. Uh, but I do like that it is a bit more open and it's down to you looking for stuff and exploring. And I, I think that's really good because that's something that you do really well is building up worlds. And if we can't explore them, like accurate worlds usually as well, by the way, because they actually use historians, um, which you saw with Origins with the um, discovery mode the actual interactive tombs you can go around and see the mummification so why not utilize that further and, and let us explore that world and I feel that doing that and making it so the quests are automatically like that is gonna really help so yeah there we go guys that's been a very quick look at Odyssey a third quick look um, and hopefully you found it useful um, I realize that it's a little bit different to usual uh, it's me talking over some muted cutscenes effectively uh, because I didn't really have much more to add in terms of gameplay. I think that the last two videos I've done are reasonably comprehensive. So hopefully this is a delicate balance and it's it's done its job. And those of you who had questions about the start of the game um, or wanted to know vague plot without knowing detail, hopefully I've done that for you um, and and so forth. Hopefully I've done for that. Hopefully I've done that for you and you've taken something useful away from this video. Um, I'm gonna go now because I need to edit some Spider-Man. But um, very much looking forward to this. I can't believe it's less than a month away. I'm very, very excited to just romp around Greece as my bae, Cassandra, and, uh, and smash some gorgons in the head. It should be really good. Um, so stay tuned for that. No idea when the content will be out because I don't know exactly when I'm getting code, etc. for it. Um, there's two specific release dates. So if you pre-order a specific edition, you'll get it a couple of days early. So um, go and look on the website for all that information. I'll put it all in the video description below as well with the other um, Assassin's Creed videos I've done on Odyssey. Thank you again to Ubisoft for flying me out to Paris. You guys are lovely. As always, it's been a pleasure and I look forward to seeing the full game in early October. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>